After years of thinking about it, I finally did it. I bought Serge Lang's Basic Mathematics. And there's a reason it took me so long to buy this book. My copy even says new on it. So this is actually a new copy of Serge Lang's Basic Mathematics. And the reason is really two reasons. So one, it's a paperback. I could not find this book in hardcover. I'm not even sure if it exists. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you can't find this book in hardcover. If it does exist in hardcover, please let me know. But all I could find were paperbacks. And the second reason, which is definitely the biggest reason, is the price. This book was expensive. I usually buy books for a few dollars. I usually don't spend that much money on single books. But sometimes I do, and this time I decided to splurge because it is Serge Lang. So this is the book, and I just got it a couple days ago, and I've just been looking at it. So in this video, this is not really gonna be a book review. I'm just gonna like show you some stuff in the book, and then maybe we'll do like a problem from the book so you can learn some math too. I think the contents in this book are extremely interesting, probably because I have been wanting this book for such a long time, and I finally got it. So part one is algebra. It starts with numbers, linear equations, and real numbers. So really basic math. Then you have some quadratic equations. And then intuitive geometry. What an interesting name, right? Coordinate geometry. So all very basic math. We've got some trig in there. Wow, it talks about sine and cosine. Analytic geometry. Miscellaneous. So functions, mappings, complex numbers. Induction. That's pretty cool. Determinants, and there's an index. So you can see there's one key component that is missing from this book, and that is the solutions. This book does not have solutions to any of the problems. In fact, I've done some of the problems, and here's some of them here, and you can see they don't even have answers next to the problem. So there are no answers to this book. So that, I think, is a big downside. That and the fact it's a paperback. However, let me show you something. Magic, it actually lays flat. So I was really concerned that the book would not lay flat. I have uh, a really thick paperback book by Abelowitz and Focus. It's a complex variables book. And it's a great book, but it doesn't lay flat. So this one lays flat, so I'm super happy about that. So let's just go ahead and do a math problem. And I picked one that is a little bit harder. So let's try to work through it. Okay, so this is the problem. We have a function from r squared to r squared as defined by f of x, y equals 2x minus y comma y plus x. And the question is to show that f has an inverse mapping. So we have to find the mapping and then show it's the inverse. So there's a couple different ways to do this. The way I'm gonna do it is simply by using the definition of inverse. And there's other ways but I thought I would just do it that way. So first, what does it even mean to be an inverse function? Well, in one variable, two functions are called inverses, say f and g, if whenever you take the composition, and I'll use this notation here, say f of g of x, that should be equal to x for all x. Likewise, g of f of x should be equal to x for all x. So if this is true for all x, then we say f and g are inverse functions, and then we can say g is equal to the inverse of f. So basically we have to find a function such that when we take the composition of that function with this function, we get the ordered pair x, y, because this is in two variables. So instead of just x, it has to be x, y. So more precisely in this problem, well, let me just do it here. Let's do the scratch work. What do we need? We need g of x, y such that Whenever you look at f of g of x, y, you should get back x, y. Notice it's the same as this one, except it's x, y instead of x, right? This is the single variable case, and this is the multivariable case. Likewise, it needs to go the other way. g of f of x, y is equal to x, y. So let's just use this to come up with the answer and then we'll check our answers. We'll, we'll actually have to verify these at the end because it does say show, but just using one of these in this particular example will give us the answer. So we need this. So we need f of g of x, y equal to x, y. Now we don't know what g of x, y is, but we do know it has to be a function from r squared to r squared. So it takes ordered pairs and sends them to ordered pairs. So what we can do is we can say that g of x, y 
is equal to uv, right? Let's just say that's the ordered pair that it takes xy to. So it takes xy and sends it to uv. So then here, I can replace g of xy with uv, and that's equal to xy. But what's f? f is here, right? So now we can actually use the definition of f. So f of xy is this, so this is our x, this is our y, except it's u and v. So we have 2u minus v, comma, and then v plus u, v plus u. And that should be equal to xy. Very nice. So now we have two ordered pairs and they're equal. So now that means that we set the components equal. So this is equal to x. So x is equal to 2u minus v, and this is equal to this. So y is equal to v plus u. So we have a system of equations, right? Which is pretty cool, so which we can solve for u and v now. Now, um, I'm just gonna write it one more time because I'm gonna add here. So I just wanna make it really clear. So I'm gonna write y as u plus v. Very nice. And now when you add these two equations, right? So you add, so you get x plus y equals 2u plus u, so that's 3u, and then these cancel. And then you can solve this for u by dividing by three. Pretty cool. So u is equal to x plus y over three. I'm gonna put that in a box because that is an accomplishment. Now that we have u, we can plug it back in here to get v. So let's do that. So we get y equals v plus x plus y over three. Notice I'm not skipping any steps here. I feel like it's really easy to mess up. And um, we're looking for v, so we can subtract this piece. So we get v equals y minus x plus y over three. To combine these, we can write the y as three y over three minus this. And then this is equal to three y. Make sure to distribute the negative sign here. So it'll be minus x minus y over three. So v is equal to, so three y minus y is two y minus x over three. So now we have u and v, that means we have g. So g of x, y in this problem. Well, we, we said that it was gonna be this, right? u of v. But now we have u and v, so it'll be parentheses x plus y over three, two y minus x over three. So that's gonna be the inverse of f. So it should work. So now uh, <laughs> comes the tedious part where we're actually gonna check. I'm gonna need another piece of paper for this because um, it's just gonna get messy now. Now it's gonna get crazy. So I've got some more paper here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and write down our functions again. So we have them in one place so we can proceed with the verification. So we have f of x, y is equal to two x minus y, y plus x. And we're gonna check to see that g of x, y, which is this function we came up with, x plus y over three, 2y minus x over three, we're gonna check that this is actually the inverse of f. So basically we just have to take the composition both ways and then show um, it's equal to, to xy. So let's do it. So f of g of xy is equal to, well, g of xy is this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that here. So it's gonna be f of, okay, I'm gonna write really small now. So x plus y over three, and then 2y minus x over three. And now we're gonna plug this into this. Okay, here's where it's gonna get a little crazy. So 2x, so it's, this is your x, so it'll be two times that. So I'm gonna write it like this, two x plus y over three minus y, so minus this. Okay, maybe I should have written a little smaller. I probably should have come down here. And then, oh no, we're okay, y plus x. So this plus this. So two y minus x over three plus x plus y over three. Yeah, you can still see it, right? Good stuff. So this is equal to two x plus two y over three minus two y plus x over three. So minus two y, let me, 
let me just go ahead and put it under the same fraction, right? Because it's all under three anyways. So minus two y plus x. And let me also put the three in the middle here so it looks a little bit better. There we go, boom. And then over here, same thing, it's all over three. So it'll be two y minus x plus x plus y over three, right? Plus x plus y over three. And then these cancel, so we get two x plus x, so three x, beautiful. And then three y over three. Oh, I love the sound of the pencil. Look at that, wonderful. I don't know why I put it in a box. <laughs> I'm just getting excited. So yeah, it doesn't need to be in a box. I don't know why I did that, but that's equal to x, y. And this is for all x, y. So now we gotta check the other direction, so let's do it. So because it's hard to see on the screen, I'm gonna write it um, again, both functions here. We have f of x, y equals two x minus y, y plus x, and g of x, y equals x plus y over three, and then two y minus x over three. Okay, so now we're gonna check the other direction. So now we have to look at, we already did f of g of x, y, so now we have to do g of x, y. So g, or the g of f of x, y. So now we replace f with what it is. So this is g of two x minus y, y plus x. And now we're looking at g, so this is our x, this is our y, so it'll be x, which is all of this, plus y, which is all of this. You see, it's x plus y, it's all of that, over three. And then two times y, which is this, minus x, which is this, all over three. Okay, so again, it's, x, which is right here, right, because it's this, plus y, which is this, which is this, over three, then two times x, uh, sorry, two times y, which is this, right, minus x, which is this, over three. So let's see what happens here. Three x over three. Here we get two y plus two x, minus two x plus y over three. And this is equal to, these cancel, so we get x. This is three y over three. So it's gonna be x, y. And this is for all x, y. And we've done it. You know, you could say something like, so we've shown their inverses. So it took two pieces of paper to do this problem. So that was an example of one of the problems from this book. And a lot of the problems are a lot easier. The book is called Basic Mathematics, but I just wanted to pick something that I don't think I've done this problem uh, yet uh, on my YouTube channel. I don't think I've done one of these examples yet. So I thought I would do something a little different that I haven't done. So, but yeah, kind of cool. Just give it a whiff. Ah, smells new. <laughs> Serge Lang, Basic Mathematics. I hope you've learned something and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care.